ok. So, welcome back. So, let us now consider the uh, the confirmations of we have finished the confirmation analysis of ethane. Now, we will start and uh, discuss the confirmation analysis of butane. So, what happens in butane? This was we have already shown butane confirmation analysis of n butane. Okay. So, in n butane you have now one extra carbon here on the two carbons. Okay. So, this is the suppose the extra carbons. Okay. So, now you have this is the n butane and you see there is again the free rotation these are the hydrogens these are the hydrogens and uh, this is the methyl. Okay. Now, you have you have this is eclipsed conformation because the bonds are eclipsing each other and as you start rotating you, you see the, this is the staggered conformation where the bonds are anti to each other, but this uh, this is a staggered conformation just remember these things that now the two methyls are really not that away from each other they are quite away from each other, but not really anti to each other. So, if you start moving this carbon carbon bond you come to a again an eclipse conformation. Now, where this methyl is now eclipsing a hydrogen earlier the methyl was eclipsing a methyl now the methyl is eclipsing, eclipsing a hydrogen. You rotate it further now you really come to a situation and staggered form where these two methyls are anti to each other. Okay. Then you further rotate. So, if you now you see that you have come back to an eclipsed conformation where methyl is eclipsing a hydrogen then you rotate further another 60 degree and you see now the two methyls are again in an angle of 60 degree, but in the opposite sense like the earlier situation and, but this is a staggered conformation and then finally, you come back to your original position. So, this is how the molecules will the molecules the ar arrangements will look like when you rotate the carbon carbon bond. Okay. So, let us come back to this analysis now. First of all, we have to identify we cannot just say that, that, that one is in the staggered form and one is in the eclipsed form, because I have shown you that eclipsed has different two different types, where the methyl methyl can eclipse each other or the methyl hydrogen can e eclipse each other. Okay. So, one is called partially eclipsed another is called fully eclipsed. Okay. Fully eclipsed means the methyl methyls are eclipsing each other. So, you have two different now eclipsed conformations one is fully eclipsed another is partially eclipsed and similarly you have two different staggered conformations one is where the methyl methyls are totally anti to each other and that is called anti conformation. So, this is a staggered conformation, but this will be called anti that means yet the methyl groups have a diagonal angle of 180 degree. On the other hand you can have a staggered conformation where the when I say methyl has a diagonal angle always think of that that planar diagonal angle cannot be between only groups this carbon that carbon and this carbon that constitutes a plane and this carbon methyl carbon this uh, this carbon and that carbon that constitutes a plane. But, can, but just for simplicity I am saying the angle between the methyls that means the diagonal angle between the planes containing the methyl groups. Okay. So, that is 60 degree that is another staggered conformation, but this is now called a Gauche conformation G A U C H E a Gauche conformation. Okay. Now, how the energy varies we have identified four different conformations here specifically. Okay. We have identified four, but again remember do not forget that this molecule has innumerable number of conformations. We are just identifying uh, based on the diagonal angles we have given some names to the forms. This is what is the this A form is what is A form is what is called the where the diagonal angle between the two methyls are 60 degree and that is what is called the Gauche form. Okay. The B form where the methyl and the hydrogen although it is written slightly inclined fashion uh, just to show it otherwise perfectly eclipsed form you cannot show because one will cover the other. 
so it is it is shown slightly in the in this direction so here you think you just consider it that this is eclipsing this ch bond that is called partially eclipsed so b will be partially eclipsed c where the methyl methyl dihedral angle is or torsional angle is 180 degree so that is what is called anti and then you have a fully eclipsed form where the methyl methyl is eclipsing each other okay on top of each other that is the fully eclipsed now suppose we start with a fully eclipsed form fully eclipsed form will have the highest energy and that is quite easy to understand because now what you have is that two methyls are eclipsing each other so there will be there will be van der waals repulsive force now acting on each other because this is not hydrogen unlike ethane so now this contributes enormously to the to the energy of the system okay the, so this is the highest energy so apart from bond opposition strain that is there but now this methyl methyl interaction steric interaction the van der waals repulsive force that contributes a major portion of the energy to this eclipse system okay so fully eclipsed has the highest energy then as you rotate start rotating that means the you are now decreasing the distance between the two methyls and as you come to the staggered form now what happens to this staggered form this is first of all this is called a gauche form because the angle between the methyls are 60 degree is 60 degree so that is called a gauche form and this gauche form is uh, certainly has lower energy than the fully eclipsed form because the two methyls are now apart from each other and the bond opposition strain is gone however although they are apart from each other but they are not that far apart that it will completely vanish or reduce the the steric interaction that was happening earlier to zero so there is still some some steric repulsion that is between these two methyls okay two methyls the other way the another strain actually i should have told you that the which is called this um, torsional strain is another kind of strain that we uh, we also consider torsional strain is not there in case of staggered form now what is torsional strain torsional strain is that suppose um, suppose there is a form in the board i can explain it suppose i have a when i do the conformation analysis i have suppose this type of energy diagram now if when i am i am here there is there must be this is higher energy there must be some uh, there must be some strain here associated with this form because it has got higher energy okay or highest point here now when i slowly reduce uh, when i do the change in the torsional angle i the energy gets reduced and energy gets reduced and then comes to a minima okay now from the minima if i go further suppose now i am increasing the angle torsional angle so as i increase the torsional angle i am now going moving away from the minima going to a i am uh, i am raising the energy so the molecule will have what the molecule will have a tendency because you are now taking the molecule away from a stable state which is a minima to an unstable state so there will be some strain that will now will be there in the molecule to come back to the original state it's like if i if i take a spring which is lying in the ground state if i hold one of the point and then try to twist the string so what happens there will be a strain that will now come into the string to go back to the original position so if i release it now it will go back to the original ground state so this twisting when you twist the string so that will be called a that is what is a torsional strain but that means you are rotating you are rotating the system and what you are trying you are deviating the system from a stable system or bringing the system from a stable to an unstable system and if you do that there will be always a tendency of the molecule to go back to the original form and that is what is called torsional strain because here the because what you are varying is the torsional angle so if by doing this torsional angle change if you see that you are crossing 
an energy minima, then and in bringing it to an energy maxima, then there will be a torsional strain that will be associated in the molecule. Okay. So, when I am here, means when the molecule is here, it will suffer from a torsional strain, because, because there is a minima here. If I put a drop of water here, the water will not remain at this point, the wa water will slowly go down and come here. That is, because the water sees that it is much more stable if it comes back here. That means, as a kind of strain happening in the water droplets. So, due to that strain it comes here. So, similarly, when you bring the molecule here, there will be a tendency of the molecule to go back. So, this tendency that strain that is happening in the molecule that is what is called torsional strain, because it is depending on the torsional angle. So, that is called torsional strain. So, in the again coming back to this, in this Gauss form there is no torsional strain, because you have attained a, a because of the reason that the energy goes down, down, down and at, attains a minimum value at 60 degree. If you cross the 60 degree, then what you are increasing? You are bringing a methyl hydrogen torsional, a methyl hydrogen steric strain and you are bringing back the bond opposition strain that electron electron repulsion. So, basically the energy goes to a minima and then again it rises and goes to the maxima. So, the, the torsion there is no torsional strain here when the angle is 60 degree, but there will be torsional strain here, because it wants to go back to the staggered uh, to the staggered form which is Gauche form. As you go again further down that means, increase above 60 degree it again wants to go back. So, there is a torsional strain which is present when you deviate from 60 degree, okay, when you deviate from the staggered form. So, torsional strain is not there. So, I hope the torsional strain concept is clear. Okay. So, there is no torsional strain in the Gauche form, but what strain is present? The strain that is present is this methyl, methyl still they are not far away, so that the van der Waals repulsive force is 0. So, there is some van der Waals repulsion is still there between this methyl and that methyl. However, this has got lower energy than the Euclid form and that is exactly what is shown here. Okay. So, you have this fully eclipsed as you increase the angle to 60 degree, now your torsional strain is gone, your, but the van der Waals repulsion is less as compared to here, but uh, it is still there. So, energy goes down and it reaches a kind of a minima when the diagonal angle is 60 degree, a torsional angle is 60. As you increase the angle further, you are now bringing an interaction between methyl and hydrogen and you are bringing that bond opposition strain that in that repulsive force between the electrons. So, that energy will start again going up and it actually goes up and it is a maxima when you have this partially eclipsed form. Okay. So, this is the partially eclipsed form that reaches a maxima. So, what happens after you reach the partially eclipsed form, you further rotate the methyl, so you are rotating the methyl. Now, you are reducing so, first you are reducing the methyl methyl interaction when you go to the Gauche form, and then after the beyond Gauche form, you are increasing the methyl hydrogen interaction and the bond opposition strain. So, you come to the Euclid form that has got a maximum energy, a maximum point, and then not the maximum energy, Eclipse has the maximum energy, but what I am saying that comes to a maxima, and then again as you cross the partial eclipse it goes the energy again starts going down, okay, because you are now removing the methyl hydrogen interaction and also you are reducing the bond opposition strain. And it becomes the minimum when the methyls are anti to each other, now there is no steric repulsion here. Okay. So, that is what is called anti and this if you assume that this is the 0 line that this has got suppose the anti form assumed to be 0, then it is not actually 0, it has got an energy, but if we say that this is 0 point energy, uh, then this is the Gauche form which has got which is calculated to be about 0 0.9 kilo calorie per mole extra energy that the Gauche form has. What is the reason for this 0 0.9 kilo calorie extra energy? That is basically the repulsion between the, the, the steric repulsion between the methyl and methyl, because they are at a tidal angle of 60 degree. 
they are still quite close enough to give a repulsive force. Okay. So, it has got 0.9 kilo calorie per mole extra energy and this is this interaction now we have a we have we call this as a gauche butane interaction. So, each gauche butane interaction has an extra energy of 0.9 kilo calorie per mole. So, if in a molecule you see there is there are two gauche butane interactions then that molecule will have an extra energy of 2 into 0.9 that means 1.8 kilo calorie per mole extra energy over the molecule which you are comparing where there is no such gauche butane interaction. Okay. This is so now you have this anti after the anti as you further rotate you come to a partially eclipsed form that will have the same energy like here. So, this is 120 here it is in the minus you can actually write in the plus form also this will be 240 degree and this will be 300 degree and this will be 360 degree. Here it is actually they have divided it into plus and minus uh, rotation, but you can do 180 and this is 240 60 degree. So, that means 240 rotation you come back to a partially eclipsed form then 300 degree rotation you come to the again the gauche form and then the fully eclipsed form. So, you complete the over 360 degree rotation you come back to the original. Okay. So, here now how many uh, maxima we are seeing here there is one maxima there is another maxima there is another maxima and there is this maxima these two maxima will be same because they represent the fully eclipsed and these two maxima will be will be same because they are partially eclipsed they will have less energy than the fully eclipsed one. How many minima we are seeing now? We are seeing a minima here that is for the gauche form, we are seeing a minima here that is called the anti form and here we are seeing a minima for again the gauche, gauche form. Okay. Uh, so, this is the uh, conformation analysis of n butane. Now, the question is how many conformers this molecule has? This molecule has three conformers, two Gauche conformer because they are occupying what are conformers? The conformations lying at the energy minima in the energy profile diagram. So, this is a conformer that is a conformer and that represents a conformer. Okay. So, these are the three conformers of n butane. What is the relationship between this Gauche form and that Gauche form? That is quite interesting if you work it up you will see that this gauche form will be the mirror image of the other gauche form and interestingly to complicate the to complicate the situation further these two gauche forms are not superimposable to each other so basically if this gauche form has plus rotation that gauche form will have minus rotation because the gauche forms don't have any center any uh, the improper elements of symmetry that means, i or the sigma or s. So, that is why they are optically active, but here n butane is totally optically inactive. Okay. So, although some of the conformers are optically active and they are mirror images to each other. So, if you try to isolate n butane you have say majority will be anti because that is the energy minima that has got the minimum energy, then some will be say about 70 percent anti and 30 percent gauche form. Out of this 30 percent 15 percent will be plus gauche form and other 15 percent will be minus gauche form. Uh, the interesting here is that you cannot isolate like the nitrogen scenario you cannot isolate these gauche forms because they are interconvertible by rotation. Earlier it was interconvertible by inversion now they are interconvertible by rotation. So, you cannot really isolate these things. So, n butane. So, these are the three conformers. Now, one can ask one very valid question is that you are saying that 70 percent is about anti and 30 percent is about gauche. I just roughly say that uh, 70 30, suppose 70 30. Now, one can ask that a point here, suppose I take a point here which is lower than the, the point which is represented by the gauche form. So, this point represents a 
conformation no doubt, but it does not represent a conformer, although it has got less energy than the Gauss form. So, a student can ask that you are considering this as a conformer, but you are not considering a form which has got lower energy than the Gauss form as a conformer, because by definition conformers are the one which are lying at the energy minima. So, even if something has energy minima energy lower than the than the Gauss form that is not a conformer. Okay. So, this thing has to be clear and the best way to understand this is that why these are the only the conformers and why these are the only ones which are present in the system and not the other ones in spite of having lower energy than the Gauss form is by saying that suppose these are nothing but hills and you have clouds here suppose they are dark clouds and if there is rain where will the raindrops collect? The raindrops will collect only at here minima, here and there. The raindrops will never collect here, because it will slip down and go to the anti. So, that is actually the scenario of the basically the molecules, uh, it is true for molecules, it is true for human beings also. If I am tired and if I see that there is a chair and a bed, I will definitely go to the bed and not I will sit on the chair, because I am tired. Similarly, if the molecule is here, the molecule sees that there is a better situation where it can sit comfortably. So, it will go to the immediately to the energy minima. So, if a molecule is here, which is lower in Gauss form in energy terms, but still it sees that oh, there is a better position for me to go there. So, it immediately goes to the minima position. So, that is why only the minimums are considered when we consider the conformers. So, conformers again I repeat are the forms which lie at the energy minima in the energy profile diagram. Okay. Remember again this Gauss, what is Gauss butane interactions? When the two methyls are at an angle of 60 degree, at a diagonal angle or torsional angle of 60 degree, that is called Gauss butane interactions and that energy you should remember that is about 0 0.9 kilo calorie per mole. Okay. I think here these are the everything is written here the anti form no torsional strain as the groups are staggered and C H C groups are this should be far not P this should be F they are far apart. Gauche form only van der Waals forces between the methyl groups these are repulsive the electron clouds repel each other which amounts uh, electron clouds. Uh, in the Gauss form, Van der Waals forces between the two methyls are repulsive, right. As I said, the methyl groups are still uh, not far each other. So, that accounts for uh, about 0 0.9 kilo calorie per mole more energy as compared to the anti conformer. The partially eclipsed form, the to there is torsional strain because it is lying in the, in the maxima. So, there is torsional strain and there is quite large van der Waals repulsive force between hydrogen and methyl and in case of fully eclipsed the highest energy because due to torsional strain as well as large larger van der Waals repulsive force between the methyl groups methyl methyl groups. Okay. So, that is the scenario. I said about 70 30, but calculations actually said it has been now uh, it is known by spectroscopic means or calculations, you can do computations. It says that about 72 percent of the molecules are in the anti and 28 percent are in the Gauche conformation. Okay. Now, if you come, these are n butane. Now, let us take uh, systems. See, n butane, we see we have seen that anti is the most stable form and uh, that contributes uh, to the uh, maximum form when you try to isolate, when you try to analyze, but it is not always true that always the anti form will be the most stable, because sometimes the Gauche form becomes stable due to other reasons. Like if you take ethylene glycol, if you take a system, this is ethylene glycol C H 2 OH C H 2 OH, ethylene glycol this is the anti form, this is the, this is the Gauche form because the OH OH like the methyl methyl. So, this is the 
O H O H and this is the way the other Gauss form. So, what happens here this because of intramolecular hydrogen bonding now possible between the between the O H which is acting as a hydrogen donor and this O H oxygen acting as a acceptor as an acceptor that forms this intramolecular hydrogen bond and that stabilizes that has a stabilizing effect. When there were methyls, there were destabilizing effect due to Van der Waals repulsive force, but now when you have O H and O H, now you have a hydrogen bonding scenario that stabilizes the Gauss form. Okay. So, when there are heteroatoms, you have to be careful. If there is a possibility of hydrogen bond, then this uh, then the Gauss form becomes more stable than the anti form. It is not only in diols, if you have one O H and another X which can form a hydrogen bond, then that will be applicable. So, X could be any of the heteroatom containing systems like O H, N H 2, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, methoxy, then amino methyl, uh, dimethyl amino groups etcetera. Okay. So, which can form hydrogen bond. So, it is not always true that the Gauss form is, is the less stable than the anti, where there is formation of hydrogen bond possible and that is only possible in the Gauss form, anti form only intermolecular hydrogen bond is possible, but we know intramolecular hydrogen bond is much more stable. So, that stabilizes the Gauss form and the Gauss form becomes the more stable one in that case. Okay. I think that is the um, what we had to say uh, about this heteroatom and we have seen the conformation analysis of N butane. Uh, next, we will uh, go to the other systems where where dipole dipole repulsion takes place. See, there are many scenarios when there are groups which are steric sterically bigger, steric they have bigger size, bigger in size. Uh, there is no question of charge separation or anything. Then steric strain will make the Gauss form less stable than the anti form. When there is formation of hydrogen bond, possibility of formation of hydrogen bond, then Gauss form becomes more stable than the anti. The another case that can come that the repulsive force can come due to dipole dipole repulsion. That means, this has the negative charge and this has got partially negative charge and then they repel each other. So, all these things can happen and we will discuss in the next, uh, uh, next uh, lecture, we will discuss the cases where dipole dipole repulsion takes. Thank you.